Hey friends, now that Wings of Betrayal is finally out on pre-order, I get to talk about all the marketing things, you guys. I love the marketing side of things. And if you are a person that clicked on this because you're like, I have no idea what to do for marketing, you're gonna get lots of ideas because you're basically gonna get my whole brained up of all the things that if I had all the time in the world, I, I would definitely do. But if you're on the side of, I just love marketing and I'm always looking for new ideas, you're in the right place as well. Because all of these ideas are going to not just be for this book, but this is a serial. It's a series of shorter novellas that complete a whole story and will eventually be a whole novel called On Wings of Ash and Dust. So I'm going to be sharing not only how I plan to market this one book, but how I also plan to market a whole series with each story coming out every two weeks. Yeah, I know I'm crazy, but this is gonna be a lot of fun. Now I got ideas for website, newsletter, social media marketing, like Instagram and YouTube for promo teams and early readers that can help you promote your book and also get reviews, as well as ideas for big event pushes like cover reveal, pre-order, and of course, release day. Now, some of these I have already done, already have experience with, and some of these I've seen other people do and I'm excited to do. So again, this will be my list. Hopefully it's inspirational to you. And if I was going to talk about each one of these in great detail, this video would be a gazillion years long. So what we're gonna do is do a quick overview of all the things. I'm gonna show you as many examples as I can of each. And then if there are certain marketing strategies that I talk about that you'd love to see in a longer, more in-depth video, definitely let me know down in the comments and I will work on making those videos for you guys. Okay, so while first setting up my marketing plan, before I let myself get too consumed by all the fun marketing ideas running around in my head, I knew I had to do some prep work Work, which I definitely recommend doing. And basically I focused on four main areas. The first was building what I'm calling my marketing toolbox, basically the details about my story that I can use in a bunch of different ways to help sell my book to the right readers. And that included these things. The first being my book's title, which is Wings of Betrayal, The Fairy Rebel, which is episode one of the On Wings of Ash and Dust serial series. And then also my cover, which I made sure was branded well for my young adult fantasy audience. If if you're curious to see the process my cover designer and I went through, I go through all of that in full detail in this video, which I'll link down below. The next thing was my book's description, which could also include a short tag or hook or a shortened version of a longer book blurb. For example, I created this shorter version of what's on Amazon to put in an Instagram post image. And just to give you a little preview of what this first episode is about, it reads, Pixie Pirate Quinn may be an outlaw wanted by all five fairy clans, but she prefers it that way. Yet, in all her years of pillaging, she never expected to be looting a funeral, least of all her twin brothers. Risking everything she's built to avenge his death, Quinn and her crew of outcasts infiltrate the world of clashing clans to attempt their biggest heist yet. But there's more at stake than she knows, and to truly honor her brother, she'll have to face the dark past she spent years hiding and evade the same dangers that claimed her brother's life. The next thing I also gathered were common tropes in my story that I felt my readers would really connect with, and I shared a bunch of these in an Instagram post right before I shared the cover, which included a feisty female lead, a fresh take on Faye with elements of pirates, dragons, and more, strong sibling relationships, misfit groups of unlikely friends like Six of Crows, enemies to lovers romance subplots, a vast fantasy world like Lord of the Rings, a competition book with fun factions like Hunger Games and Divergent, surprising twists and turns, fun banter, and forbidden magic. The next thing I gathered were also comp titles or comparative titles, basically other books, movies, TV shows that share elements that my book also has. And you heard a couple connected with my tropes. Here's some more examples on the screen. And some of them even made it into the end of the book description on Amazon, which reads, full of action and intrigue with a unique world and fresh take on Faye, this young adult fantasy adventure is perfect for fans of Six of Crows and the Folk of the Air series. Another thing too is gathering quotes from the book or early readers' reactions. This is something I shared on my Instagram stories and it was a quote from one of my proofreaders which reads, a fast paced swashbuckling roller coaster of a read leaves you wanting more. 10 out of 10 would recommend. The last thing I did was to make sure I knew my ideal audience which are obviously young adult fantasy readers, also those that love epic fantasies, fairies, pirates, 
And this also helped me pick the right genre categories for my book on Amazon. Because of this, plus implementing some of my marketing ideas this past week, Wings of Betrayal became a number one new release in one of those categories and is currently in the top 100 for one of Amazon's bestsellers list. Now, disclaimer, Amazon bestseller lists are not like the New York Times bestseller lists, but it does mean Amazon is showing my book on their lists that others are commonly searching for. So that's definitely helping with reaching my ideal readers. The second prep step was to get clear about my goals, to make sure I picked marketing ideas that matched what's most important to me. Some of these goals was to grow a fandom for my series and also future fantasy books, to get exposure to as many ideal readers as possible, to focus on sell through, so people that actually wanted to read through to the end of the series, get as many reviews as possible because that is crucial in selling your book as well. Then of course, from whatever money I spent on editors and cover designers and publishing things, I'd love to have a goal to make that money back by a certain date, which means that I'd also be considering my budget and return on investment. Third prep step was to prioritize which marketing ideas I was going to invest my time in and also sometimes, again, my money. The first thing I'm going to say is something that a lot of my publishing friends have told me as well, and that is don't try to do everything. It's so tempting because there's so many fun ideas, especially for a person like me that enjoys this stuff a lot, but I also know I definitely want to enjoy the process and not be super stressed and promise too much and not deliver on everything. So here's some of the steps I took. The first was to just have fun brainstorming all the ideas I had. And again, you're going to get all of these ideas coming very shortly in this video. Then I've been trying to make a priority list. What will be most effective and also what I'll have the most fun with, because I think if you're having fun with your marketing, that will show through in your marketing and people will be excited about it. Then I have a, if I have time, or maybe I'll do this next time list for the things that I just don't have time to do and would just drive me crazy if I tried to do it all. And like I said before, I definitely needed to consider my budget, which I'm really thankful to have the support of my patrons and my YouTube members who are just amazing. So if you have groups like this that wanna support you, that's definitely helpful as well. And the last thing was to figure out the when, <laughs> when I was gonna do each of these things and how much time I needed to dedicate maybe each day or each week to doing this well. And if you ever need help with balancing your calendar and creating a time blocking schedule, I have a few videos on that too that I'll link down below in a playlist. The last prep thing I want to share before we get into all of the fun ideas is to pick what platforms you really want to focus your energy on and the spaces where your ideal reader is already going to be. For me, I already have a loyal following on my website and my newsletter, so that's really important to me. Then social media, which we'll talk a lot about, but I've definitely been advised to focus on just a couple and not all of them. So I'm going to be focusing on Instagram and YouTube mainly. I'll also be doing some things on Goodreads. And in case none of those options are your favorite, I wanted to list a bunch of other options. And even though a lot of my ideas might reference Instagram and YouTube, a lot of them can definitely be used on any of these platforms. Okay, let's get into the actual plans and ideas. And for me, that really starts with my website and newsletter. I know a lot of you are probably super excited to get to the social media part, and we will. There's a lot there. But I really wanted to start with some tips for websites and newsletters because social media, although great and definitely important, is not a domain you own. It can be a very fickle beast that doesn't even guarantee that all the people that are following you will always get your updates. So especially if you're gearing up to publish, it's really important to have a website with a newsletter. For me, I want to make sure I update my website, and that includes updating my books page, which I've already done, so you can see the cover and the blurb and all the links to all the things. And I'm still working on updating my homepage and my author bio page as well as my members page, which is exclusive to my newsletter subscribers. I'll soon be adding a sneak peek to the beginning of this story, but I've already been adding a ton of other exclusives while I've been working on the book the last few years, plus tons of resources for fellow writers too. Anyone who wants access just needs to sign up for my newsletter, which is another vital resource to stay connected with those that are already excited to get news about your books. If websites and newsletters are making you a little anxious, I also highly recommend checking out my author website bootcamp, where I teach writers every everything I've done to build my website and grow a newsletter of over 3,000 subscribers. Another thing you can add to your website is a press or media kit. Um, this is for media or influencer opportunities. It's basically a page you can use when contacting someone who does author or book interviews on their blog or YouTube channel. Or if someone reaches out with interest, you can just hand them the link to this page that has everything they need. 
I personally am still working on this kind of page for myself, but I know my friend Savannah J. Goins has an awesome video all about this, including an example of hers. So I would definitely check that out if this is something you're interested in creating. I also really want to update my merch store. Right now, my store is featuring items with super cute cartoon versions of my characters and fairy wings that Arctic Paintbrush created for my YouTube members, custom emojis and badges. I love them so much that I ended up putting them on my merch and I just thought it'd be really fun that as the book comes out, readers can then purchase fairy merch to help root for their favorite clan or competitor as they read through the competition that takes place during the series. And if you're curious, I use Teespring to create sweatshirts, mugs, pencil pouches, stickers, and more. I personally always love getting merch from my favorite books or movies. So my hope is that this will help reach my goal of creating a fandom with my books. Also, a cool thing with Teespring is when I reach 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, I can actually feature my merch right below my videos. And this has also been another great way to make some money towards paying for editors, cover designers, and other publishing expenses. I also plan to run some discounts during release, and I really want to add um, some extra t-shirts and such that have book quotes that fans really enjoy, and also maybe like posters with the beautiful illustrated covers. I just think it'd be a lot of fun. Okay, now what a lot of you are probably really excited about is to get into some of the social media ideas. And again, I've personally chosen to focus on my YouTube channel and my Instagram account, but if these are not your jam, many of these ideas will work for a lot of different kinds of platforms. For example, many platforms like Instagram and Twitter only give you one space to put a link in your bio, which can be super limiting when you want to reference people to your website, your social media platforms, and all the links to your books, etc. That's why I'm a big proponent of creating a simple links page on your website that has all your most important links in one place that you can continually update. And then you can just put that link in the link in your bio. And you can see that there in my Instagram, what's circled in the red is my links page. The second screenshot there is what you first see when you come to my links page. So it has my social media buttons and my most recent YouTube video. And then as you scroll down, you'll also see all of the links that I really want to highlight. I constantly update these based on what I want my viewers to see most. And right now you can see a lot of them are really focused on my book because that's the thing I am really excited about right now and telling people to check out, but I'm constantly updating these with whatever I want my audience to see most. Next, I focused on creating a bunch of promo graphics. And by that, I mean a bunch of different things. First, I made 3D renders of my book cover and partly hidden ones to promote my cover reveal last week. You can see those last two right there. This really helped me create some fun social media and website banners like this one for my YouTube channel. And I was also able to create some cover mockups and these can be used on their own or with text like my book description, which I already showed you guys. I also created a few graphics to promote my pre-order and my pre-order benefits or incentives, which include early chapters if you fill out my pre-order form. Another idea is save the date type graphics like for my cover reveal. I could have also added some simple text to this one to create some countdown posts until the reveal day. And like I showed you before, another idea is to put quotes from early readers, beta readers, proofreaders, or other authors onto graphics like this. And all of these graphics could also be partnered with a full post with a bunch of text that goes more into the insight of your story, your characters, your world, your writing and publishing process. And again, this could be not just on Instagram, but pretty much everywhere. If you're wondering how I've created all of these different things, I am not doing it from scratch or Photoshop. I'm using free tools like canva.com and bookbrush.com. Both of these have paid features, but both of them also have free versions. I'm particularly loving bookbrush right now. And as a sneak peek next week, I'm actually doing a full tutorial and demo with one of the founders of bookbrush. So definitely make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in checking that out. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, wait, I don't actually have my cover yet, or I'm not ready to share it. Here's a few more ideas for you. The first is to create aesthetics like this one from my friend Cassidy Clark and her upcoming novel, The Saltwater Air. I just think these are beautiful depictions of the mood and the vibe of the story. These are especially easy to make with Canva. I would just be careful when using other people's photos or art without their permission. I would at least give them credit, but usually I try to get permission if you can. My favorite place to get free use photos is on a website called unsplash.com. So I definitely check that out if you're looking for these kinds of photos. 
Another idea I think is super powerful is when an author shares sneak peeks of the actual story and their writing style. I know as a reader, I can see a cover and be really excited and I can read a blurb and be like, that sounds really cool. But when I actually get to see the writing, I'm like, oh, I love this. I need to get this book right now. So I really love the idea of sharing story snippets or quotes from the book. You could even do this on a weekly basis. I know there's a hashtag, especially on Instagram called Teaser Tuesday. I've seen people use, and this is an example of mine and how I visually showed the first few paragraphs of my story in a carousel on Instagram. I also really loved the post that my friend Jesse Elliott did to show a sneak peek of her YA fantasy, These Wicked Delights. And she actually used screenshots of Kindle pages of her book that's also in a carousel. And I just thought this was super easy and super smart. And why didn't I think of this? Similar ideas you can do on places like Instagram and Twitter, but also use as an entire YouTube video if you want, are ideas like this. You could share custom character art, which you can hire an artist to do this. There's a lot of really great artists I found on Instagram, but some other other more free options might be to do my character as Sims characters. If you like the Sims like I do, I've definitely thought of you doing this as a YouTube video and just creating them in the Sims and then showing you guys what they look like. Another idea is my characters as Enneagram numbers or as Harry Potter houses or even picking a celebrity dream cast or a new idea I saw starting to circulate was actually using the Voila app in a really interesting way. Basically, you use the app to make cartoon versions of your celebrity dreamcast, which makes kind of cartoon looking versions of your characters. All you would do is upload pictures of your dreamcast to the app one by one, and they create these cartoon versions. I first saw JJ Otis and Allie Ernest do this. So this is uh, JJ's cast and this is Allie's cast from one of her books. And I just think they're so cute. I haven't done this myself yet, but I really wanna try it. And it's kind of on my, if I have time list. If you're really advantageous, another idea is to host a challenge or schedule fun events on your platform. Again, Cassidy Clark has some really great ideas. She's been hosting some Instagram events pretty much every Saturday leading up to her release. Some of the events are things that Cassidy is mostly doing, but I think some of them are also her challenging others to sort of join her in doing similar postings. So in essence, you could actually create a whole Instagram challenge for other people to follow along with you, or if you have a street team, they could join in with this as well. I have even more ideas coming, but I just wanted to put this in here, especially if you're on Instagram. What I've really found helpful is following other authors and actually using the Instagram save feature to save posts that do, I think, do marketing really well into a folder so that when I'm ready to market, I can look at what others have done and be like, how can I do this in a unique and fun way that's unique to me? One more that is specific for Instagram is you can also make all these similar kinds of posts as reels instead of just a static post. I haven't done this yet myself, but I see other authors doing it a lot lately and it looks so much fun. Plus Instagram is really favoring video posts and reels right now. So again, it's on my if I have time list, but I'd really like to try this. Another idea that really works pretty much for any platform, but specifically I've seen it on Instagram and YouTube is hosting a read along or a live reading experience. For a read-along, basically you invite your audience to read through your book or series with you. I really loved helping my friend Bethany as she planned her read-along for the Stolen Kingdom series on Instagram. And basically you announce to your readers when they should read certain chapters or books by, and then you can share behind the scenes details as you go. Make sure you let them know if they're spoilers or it's spoiler free. And then Bethany also hosted weekly Instagram live Q&A sessions after each book, which again, you could do on any platform like YouTube as well. Since for my book, I have a new episode coming out every two weeks for my series, I'm definitely planning to do this in some way. And if you wanna get a sneak peek of what mine will look like, stay until the end, because I definitely wanna share some of my ideas. I've also been chronicling and sharing the entire book process and what I'm learning along the way here on Instagram and YouTube pretty much since I started seriously working on this story over three years ago. And this has really been a great way to drum up long-term interest in this story. And some people have been following it all the way since the beginning. So if you're watching this and you've been following me since the beginning, definitely let me know in the comments. I would love to know that you're still here and still excited for the story. On my channel, I've also created playlists of videos for each part of the plotting, writing, and editing process that I've also organized on my four writers page on my website. And I'm also continually adding to my new publishing diaries playlist where I'm sharing and vlogging the publishing process too. 
some other story focused video ideas, which again, you can do on YouTube or other platforms that let you add video like IGTV or Facebook is to just show exciting things about the book. This could be creating a book trailer. And if you want some ideas or some how to videos, my friend Mandy Lynn has a bunch of that in her book trailer playlist, which I will link down below. I haven't done this yet myself, but I am thinking of doing this with book brushes, book trailer creator, which I didn't even know they had. And I'm super excited to play with one idea I have done though, is because I have a writer audience is to create book themed writing sprints. And for me, those turned into fairy themed sprints where everyone who is sprinting chooses a fairy clan for my book to join. And our word count or productivity count at the end gives us points to the clan that we've picked leading to one clan winning by the end. Some of you have been asking when I'm hosting the next sprint. And in July, I definitely plan on doing a few because Camp NaNoWriMo is happening. So I thought that, that would be really fun and really motivating. A few other video ideas I've seen is unboxing a proof copy if you are doing physical copies, daily videos leading up to the release that can get people really excited or doing a live Q and A. But some other really fun ideas I've seen that you could pretty much do anywhere are the following. You could do giveaways. And I've seen a lot of people do this as a collab with other authors. So you get a bunch of audiences all together in the same vein, you could do a newsletter swap or an account takeover. I've seen people create Pinterest boards and blog posts that connect to that. One thing I really want to try is hosting some contests as my series comes out and as people get to know the characters, maybe doing contests for character art or cosplay. And then some digital goodies I've been thinking about is making some custom Spotify playlists or soundtracks for the books, um, maybe even making a couple that have to do with specific chapters in the books. So as you're reading specific chapters, I could pick songs that match the mood of those specific chapters. That would definitely take a long time though. So I'm still thinking about that one. Another thing I really want to do is create a character quiz for my fairy clan. So like Harry Potter houses, people could figure out exactly what fairy clan they would fit into. And one thing I've seen Sarah Cannon do that I love so much too is signed or save the date wallpapers for phones or desktop. And I just thought this was really cool because then people can download them and put them in a place where they will see them often and think about the book. Another thing I'm personally really excited about is actually my brother has always wanted to create a board game and he read my book and loved it so much that he is creating a board game based on my book. And I know not everybody can do this, but if you have friends or family or you have your own skills and you wanted to try doing this, I think this would be super cool. Even if it was just like a digital version of a game, I just think this is so fun. And specifically with my genre, I think fantasy lovers really do love board games. And so if they picked up the board game first and realized it was also connected to the book, then they might also check out the book or or vice versa. And another idea that I definitely would love to try someday is to submit my book to a book box. I've seen Once Upon a Book Box and a bunch of other subscription boxes that look so cool. And they basically take the new book and they share it with a bunch of people that are subscribed to their book box with fun goodies. And I just think it is the coolest thing. One note though, is to make sure you submit early because I know they like to pick their books ahead of time. All right, finally, we are at a place where we're talking about promo teams and early readers. And these are basically groups that will help you spread the word. So far, we've been talking about how you can promote your book, but if you're the only one sharing about your book, you won't reach nearly as many people as if you had help. These teams and readers can also be really vital in helping you get reviews and get them early or get them right as the book is releasing. And that is super important as well. For me, the first group I enlisted is my beta readers and proofreaders. And though they primarily signed up to give feedback on my book, if they love it, then I figured they also probably want to help share about my book. And this has definitely been true. These are also really great people to ask if they want to join your promo teams, like an arc team or a street team, or at least write a review to post on a retailer website or one they can give you to post early on social media. Another way you can get early readers is to run giveaways where the winners get early copies. I definitely wanna do some giveaways, but I'm also enlisting early readers by giving early copies to all of my patrons as a thank you for their support. In addition, I've also been thinking about doing an ARC team and or a street team. An ARC team is a group of readers that get free early copies in exchange for an honest review. Usually you want to find and contact influencers who review books on a regular basis and have a decent sized audience, but really you can enlist anyone who wants to share. It's 
it's really up to you how many people you want on your list. I've definitely been advised to create a form for people to sign up so you can be a little selective in who you choose. And then when the book releases, you send a reminder for them to post their review. A street team, on the other hand, is a group that generally wants to be a little more active with you. Typically, you give them challenges like resharing a post or requesting your book at their local library, sometimes in exchange for early copies or other prizes. I've been advised to create a form for this as well and then decide where to host this group because chances are this team is going to be super active if you can get them not only talking to you but talking to each other. Some places I've seen authors do this is on a Discord group or a Facebook group. And at the end of the day for me, I think what I'm going to do is do ARC readers with a street team option that will be hosted in a Discord group. So if this book sounds like one that you'd be really excited about, I have a form down below for anyone who is interested. I'm still figuring out all the details of what it will look like, but if you have any interest at all, definitely fill out that form and I will email you when I've finalized everything. One thing I'll just mention that I'm not gonna do this time around, but I've seen a lot of people do from time to time is doing a blog or an Instagram tour. I'll probably wait to do something like this for when I have a physical book because my serial is first coming out as eBooks. But one more super important team that you'll probably end up doing first is your cover reveal team, which will help you share your cover when you first release it to the world. I've been told by published friends over and over that this is a super crucial time to not just reveal your cover and get people excited, but to also include your pre-order if you're going to do a pre-order because many people seeing the cover will just want to auto buy. And so having a cover reveal team to help you do this is super, super helpful. And I just experienced this last week when I did my cover reveal and it was really successful. And I just want to say again to everybody who helped with that, thank you. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. As always, I would set up a form, which was really helpful to get to know the people that were interested in helping me on my cover reveal team. I also gave them an instructions document with a bunch of the book details, along with a couple folders too, of the mock cover graphics, 3D graphics, promo graphics that they could share on reveal day. And along with this, I decided to do a pre-order incentive. And for me, that meant that everyone who pre-ordered and fill out my pre-order form that you can see here got digital early chapters, which I'm working on right now and will be sending out before the end of the month. Other prize ideas I've heard other people doing are signed copies, book theme merch, character art, or you could ask other author friends to contribute book merch or books of their own to the giveaway. For those kinds of prizes, usually only a handful of people or one person wins, or I've seen people sort of partner the everyone wins idea, but then one person getting a big grand prize. Then there's the all exciting release day. So these are some things that I've seen others do that I'm really excited to try. I've considered filming the whole release day and sort of editing it together to make a vlog later. I definitely want to make a note to myself to share everywhere all the things, Patreon, newsletter subscribers, Instagram posts, YouTube, everything. It's also really fun to do a release party of some kind. This can be online or in person. For mine, I would love to wear my own book merch and probably read aloud a sneak peek of the story. Because I have multiple books in the series, I might also reveal the cover to the next book and the blurb. And during at least the first and last release party, I'd love to have some co-hosts, other authors with me that are in the same genre to make it more fun and ask them to invite their audience too. I think it'd be really fun to do some games that I've done um, on other release party live streams and maybe also host some collab giveaways. And finally, like I promised, if you are doing a series, here's some ideas for marketing multiple releases. While releasing my specific serial, my story takes place over the course of a competition and it is broken up into six parts. So I want to do a community activity related to each part of the story as they release. My first episode is sort of the setup of the story where we meet the main character. And so for me, I think the first release is going to be a big release party with friends that join to help me co-host games and giveaways. And then we get into the heart of the story for episode two, where the competition starts. And each part of the competition has a different focus and a different theme. The first trial of the competition is the trial of knowledge. So I thought it'd be really fun to host some kind of trivia game after everybody has read episode one and a little of episode two. And I'd probably have the winners get early copies of the next episode. For episode three, it is the trial of beauty. And so I'd love to do a talent contest where people 
people can create character art or cosplay or write songs or poems. And then I would feature some of my favorites here on YouTube and on Instagram. For episode three, it is the trial of life. And so I'd love to give a percentage of the profits that I get from selling books and merch during those weeks to donate to a charity or cause. Episode five is the trial of creativity. And I was thinking it'd be really fun to do some kind of Instagram challenge at this point with daily creative activities that people can do in posts or in stories. And then episode six is the trial of strength. And I kind of just want to celebrate that we're strong enough to do it. We did it. We are celebrating and have more games and giveaways with a bunch of friends. Now, if you found this list helpful and you are looking for more self-publishing tips, I'm actually doing a whole series called My Self-Publishing Diaries. And I'll link that playlist down below so you can check out all the videos, including next week's video, which is going to be a whole demo of Book Brush by Kathleen, who is one of the founders of Book Brush herself. And I'm so excited because there's so many things I want to show you guys. It's really cool. And of course, don't forget that if you're excited about Wings of Betrayal and it sounds like the kind of book that you would love, I would love it if you would consider pre-ordering because all of the pre-orders help Amazon place this book in the right list and help other readers find it. Plus, like I said, when you fill out my pre-order giveaway form, you get at least four early chapters of the book. And if you're really excited to see all of these marketing ideas actually unfold and you want to follow my journey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Instagram. You can join my newsletter or Patreon. But however we connect, I'm super excited to go on this journey with you. And if you're looking for even more tips on writing or editing or any stage of the writing process of the things that I've experienced so far, check out one of these two videos and we'll see you there.